Hello, my name is Berkan Fidan. I am Performance and Process Director of OYAC Cement. Today, I will present our digital transformation journey in cement manufacturing. I'll start my presentation with a short info about our group company. Simpro Global Holdings, established by OYAC and TCC, and operates in the field of cement, concrete, craft paper, and bag manufacturing. Simpor operates in Netherlands, Turkey, Portugal, Romania, Ivory Coast, and Cape Verde. And also, our new plant will be commissioned in Cameroon at the beginning of next year. Our largest operation in Turkey. And uh, we have seven integrated plants and three grinding plants in Turkey. And with, the, with cement capacity of 22.5 million tons and 12.4 million tons of clean air production capacity, we are the biggest cement producer in Turkey. And we have several products like besides uh, gray clinker and gray cement, we are, the, we are one of the biggest producer uh, in white cement production and also we are the largest producer in the granulated, ground granulated blast furnace slack. The, the other biggest operation in Portugal, uh, there are, we have three integrated cement plants, two grinding plants, and also ready mix aggregates, and also back production, uh, back production operations in Portugal. And the, our new target is in West Africa. And uh, we have been in West Africa uh, since 2020. Our first uh, operation, it's in, our first operation is in Cote d'Ivoire, in Ivory Coast. And also uh, the other operation uh, will be commissioned in Cameroon uh, with a new plant. Now I will start our industrial digitalization journey. We, uh, we named our uh, project, uh, industrial digitalization project named as uh, OYAC Cement for Zero. And we have four parts uh, in that phase, that initial phase of our project. Uh, the first part it just based on asset framework structure, developing data collection and on screen visualization. In the part two, industrial data lake, machine learning adaptations, and predictive and prescriptive analytics. In part three, business intelligence integration, AI supported analyzing, global industrial operations data warehouse, and some authentic tools and platforms. At the fourth part, advanced process control adaptations, machine learning assisted industrial ops, and mixed reality integration. That phase, it's just based on that four parts. And uh, the first part is the fundamental and the baseline of that uh, project. And the other parts just started uh, on parallelly uh, on the, with the project. Just giving an idea about the operation, as I told, just we, we have been operating in Turkey, in Portugal, in, in, in Azores, in Cape Verde, and also in West Africa. And we are, we are, we, our, aim, our aim was collecting data from all that regions and analyzing it and getting valuable, uh, valuable results for them. And by, by the help of it, just we, we created our, uh, our artificial intelligence brand as named as Industri. And we have been, we have been, we have been doing some partnership with some, with some suppliers, technology suppliers. Our data management, uh, digitalization, data collection, connections, and the main baseline platform uh, and the visualization partner, it's OSISoft. We are using Pi system from OSISoft. In our uh, automated machine learning, data science, and uh, artificial intel intelligence adaptation partner is Data Robot. Uh, we have been using data robot platform and we, we are just creating our models, deployments, 
and we use that output in our APC projects process optimization and our uh, our industrial lobs adaptations. With with that project, with with that uh, scope of project, uh, just we are now we, we could we could we could uh, online monitor a, nearly eighteen different facilities in three different continents. Actually, our plan is also adapting our aggregate operations, ready mix operations into that uh, scope, and also to follow nearly more than fifty ready mix operations in Turkey and more than forty ready mix operations in Portugal and also additional operations will come in Africa and also uh, some some other uh, some other adaptations about uh, aggregate operations aggregate production facilities will be added uh, will be added to that scope as a new facilities just roughly with with that initial stage it's uh, there are more than 3 billion uh, individual data records per year uh, currently uh, per year uh, are, are currently collected uh, with our system and uh, also some artificially uh, generated uh, just data available it's not added into that value and uh, that amount is just individually recorded data amount in a year nearly because are just nearly more than 80% of data, which is collecting that data on second basis. And also some time range like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, some 10 minutes, an hour, and also daily data, according to priority and type of that data. We are doing quality predictions uh, of manufacturing cement with high accuracy. Uh, that's also an important detail for us, for also for the cement industry, because the cement product it differs from uh, the other manufacturing uh, industries, many of the others, because our products quality uh, can be uh, can be obtained uh, just uh, just after 28 days, and if you could predict it uh, before that four weeks time. Uh, we could manage our process both in efficiency, product quality, and uh, and the other effectiveness. And uh, we are doing predictive maintenance support, prescriptive maintenance analysis to detect potential deviations on our uh, processes. It's maintenance support is also critical for us. We 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 just following anomalies on our equipments by the help of several sensors like vibration, temperature, uh, and, and also uh, the other related uh, sensors from the field. We, by, the, by using uh, historical data of them, uh, we are just uh, monitoring continuously those equipments. And we are planning to just also uh, implement that structure to all of our facilities. Uh, starts with the most important one uh, to the least important. The current situation is just we are doing some pilot studies to, to, to check uh, the capability and performance of our analysis. The other part is based on process, uh, animal detection, predictive and prescriptive analysis uh, are also critical for us on process control stage. Uh, we, we just uh, combine some the data from the sensors on the field and also some quality parameters and also some measurements, process measurements, it's online measurements like gas flows, gas concentrations, temperatures, and some also some uh, scanners and camera views also added. Uh, some visual uh, visual data is also added and mixed. And uh, then, then we try to predict the actual condition to understand the anomaly and to warn the operators and also the plant people, and also predict uh, some values, some critical values, operational parameters to control the process. And we are using uh, some detailed reporting tools, and they are supported. Uh, we are, we are, and, and just we are planning to do it with AR, AR supported uh, performance analysis. 
Now it's just we are uh, creating some reports and to, to just uh, update it automatically and to check the values and also to feed the system of uh, our ERP system with that data. But besides that, uh, we have been uh, we have been working on adaptation of uh, new generation BI solutions by the help of augmented intelligence adaptation. By the help of that one, just uh, daily, weekly, and monthly reports and yearly 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 reports uh, can be taken automatically, and also can be can be controlled and checked uh, by uh, by all the people uh, according to their requirements. Uh, as I as I as I said that the, the part one is the one of the most important and critical part for us. Uh, when we look on our digital structure, uh, digital architecture, and uh, the formation of global formation, uh, just uh, we, we we are just collecting nearly more than a hundred thousand tags. Uh, we have a, we have a capacity uh, with that uh, tag amount. The, just that that includes many sensor data. Uh, and just uh, some measurements, some manual data inputs, some quality data. And by collecting that data, also their combinations, some created, uh, generated new artificial data, and th these are also st stored. Then on the baseline of that one, we are using Pi system, but over of that system, the old the, the development architectural model, the installations, uh, some integrations, uh, the, the the structure uh, the structure and asset structures from the the main elements to the child elements from a plant to a single sensor on a on a on, on a motor drive like that it's a drill down structure generated uh, with a standard way uh, and also we created our own visualization designs we we are using the the platform abilities and also we added some uh, additional uh, visual uh, visual uh, visual features by the help of some uh, by the help of some coding structures like Java and other other uh, types to do some new adaptations and to create an uh, original uh, visualization design and all of them uh, all of them uh, has been done by uh, OXM and AI team and uh, it, it, it also uh, today it's also going like that uh, by by that team by the help of that team uh, just uh, when i come to uh, data collection and communications part uh, this is the mo one of the most important and uh, one of the biggest barrier in uh, just digitalization uh, projects in some uh, industrial manufacturers because uh, like us, many companies, especially if, if the company has several plants uh, at different locations and, and just and, uh, and also the planted in different times, uh, some, of, some of them are old generation, the other one is new generation. It causes some problems about just the, the PLC systems, DCS, SCADA systems, versions, different brands. That causes a big problem about collecting data. And the adaptation and not only the just taking that data from different sources in a plant, the issue is that it's just managing and following that data and uh, just uh, checking, uh, tracking uh, the uh, quality of data and just uh, it's it's just uh, the, the, the flow of this, the, the, the flow is critical to controlling that data flow in the plant. And, uh, accord and accordingly, uh, we just uh, we just we designed our structure based on that uh, formation. And uh, the main, the most important part is a strong and reliable communication and uh, data collection platform. And then the other part is the archiving issue, uh, archiving that data in a uh, database, in a re relational database, and also. Just the response of database is also critical because not only storing that data, also uh, you need to check that data uh, whenever you want. In which, 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 uh, and uh, some uh, also same same data source just uh, gets some requests from several users. 
uh, some of them try to check some trends, the other people just uh, try to look some data uh, on previous days, previous months or previous year. Uh, that's also critical, uh, the just uh, the adaptation and uh, the response time and uh, and the, the other capabilities like uh, just just like doing some revisions uh, on the uh, tax type of tech need to be uh, correct the the, the 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 data at before stored about that tech it's named as backfilling it's also a critical problem to control and uh, to manage not only the uh, actual value also the old data structure it's also critical for, for us and uh, just uh, our, we generated our uh, asset framework structure with a hierarchical authentic coding principle. It's just we designed that uh, coding principle and just uh, uh, elements and child elements based on that one. By the help of that one, just the rules and some analysis can be done much more quickly and we can compare all the data and we could visualize it and we could report it much more effectively. And uh, visualization is also critical uh, on stream analyzing and adjustable uh, formation uh, has, has, has been designed. And uh, also data transfer options uh, because we are collecting data from uh, some different DCS SCADA systems or versions. Some, uh, some sensors, uh, some I IoT adaptations is required, some PLCs, third party platforms. Uh, and some some data sources and also uh, just we are getting some data from web sources like the like the local temperatures weather conditions the uh, electric electrical market prices it's because it's also critical in like in turkey because it's just pricing is just uh, there's a dynamic pricing in electrical energy you need to follow it you need to manage it and uh, we could get data from that uh, web page uh, directly to our system. We could record it, we could analyze it, we could check it as well. It's just an example. Uh, when uh, the other part is just our, as I told, the, the, the main baseline uh, named as asset framework, it just the asset framework structure is critical for us and uh, it just uh, it, it's the main structure of the in the, our industrial data lake. And uh, we could control uh, we could control all the data with a hierarchical formation, and uh, and also some uh, just we had, we could check the uh, sensors uh, of the equipment with a hierarchical structure. We defined that hierarchical structure from the as I said, it's from the plant name, then unit name, then uh, the subunit, uh, the equipment then the sensors on the equipment can be checked uh, effectively. And uh, the analysis and the artificial tax is also critical because some sensors data is uh, me sometimes meaningful, but sometimes the combinations, some calculations, some mathematical models or other things need to be calculated to make new tax and to follow it and to store it. Just to give an example, it's just the CO2 emissions is critical for us. And CO2 per ton of clean care, it's a, it's, there is a long calculation based on that one. It can be done in here, just for some quality data, some flow data from the field, some temperatures, some oxygen measurements, and uh, just doing then normalize it according to that one. And you could see easily an actual CO2 emission on your system. It's critical or specific energy consumption, like specific heat consumption, or alternative fuel substitution rates. These are artificial tax composed of different uh, uh, tax data and some mathematical calculations. It can be done inside the platform. And uh, the other thing, as I told, it's a sophistic sophisticated storage and instant access capabilities. We could check it. We could check the health of that data. And uh, it's also critical uh, for a strong uh, baseline, strong uh, database structure. Yeah, I, I, to, I, I just uh, I told about our uh, original uh, visual designs. Now I'm just uh, I want to show some uh, examples about our actual screens. These screens are just uh, some drill down screens 
you could see some specific details on that uh, on that screens just specific energy consumption sales uh, production rates in in a periodical basis uh, some average some trends can be just seen you could you could check all the data uh, you could compare all the data plant by plant uh, it's also uh, we, we we are capable to do it and uh, we are just tracking uh, we are just tracking and uh, checking the performance of all the plants and plant people can check also their equipment and just department department responsibles can check their own department and some technicians can check some specific drives motors pumps and just with the sensors on it uh, yeah, also people can generate own screens just uh, taking that data quickly with the drag and drop structure. Uh, the baseline is based on uh, uh, just standard structure, but there is also uh, process control screens, equipment control screens, and some uh, energy management or some emission uh, or just uh, greenhouse gases following uh, emission following screens also available. We are just storing that data, visualizing it. At the meantime, also we are using uh, we, are, we are just also collecting data from our analyzing tools uh, with the uh, ai uh, analysis and machine learning analysis we are just sending that data and getting back getting back analyzed data and we are also comparing actual data and predicted data on the same platform and that uh, and that platform is also can be reached uh, directly from a web page, uh, from uh, our web page, and just uh, we, we could check it from. Uh, it's also from our cellular phones, from our computers, uh, uh, wherever we are. In the part two, it's also the most one of the most important part. Just after just getting a maturity and some after you just collected really. Uh, just well, uh, well uh, managed and uh, clean data. The one of the advantage of that the previous platform it's just collecting that data in a uh, strong way. Uh, and uh, just uh, we are we are using uh, just the machine learning algorithms to do it. To, uh, we are just checking our data, analyzing it. Uh, by the help of that machine learning structure. Uh, we focused on and uh, we also selected the formation because of its quick response and quickly adaptable uh, part. We, we just uh, we, we just uh, we just selected the philosophy of auto machine learning structure auto ML. And uh, now uh, since uh, since the mid of 2020, nearly one year ago, we have started, to uh, do analysis uh, on some predictive and prescriptive analysis, some anomaly detections and operational deviations. We just created some models uh, by our own team. Uh, we are checking uh, their accuracy uh, with some pilot applications, uh, some in pilot process section, grinding section, uh, and also uh, and also some demand control like just collecting amount of sales and regionally and to just check uh, to just control uh, the required uh, production uh, amounts and to, to control uh, to control the process and our uh, production plan the baseline on the other side just checking equipment to detect anomalies and uh, failures before they have before they uh, before they, they they would happen and also some process control details and quality predictions. It's also critical for us. We're just controlling our quality with help, by the help of predictions, because as I said, uh, spontaneous quality, it, while the process uh, process part is critical, but on the other side, our final quality exactly can be uh, learned after 28 days. And we could predict 28 days later more than 95% accuracy. Uh, that that's also critical for us uh, on our pilot scale applications in some multiple plants we could we could get that data with a high accuracy and uh, and now we are just uh, planning to adapt it to all our plants and also to our operations to that data 
by the help of that data, we just combine the process control structure with that uh, predicted quality. Uh, uh, as I said, not only technical KPIs, demand forecast is also can be, uh, we, we could do uh, by the help of uh, automated ML uh, structure. We could predict uh, just uh, demand and uh, we could manage our production planning uh, according to energy consumptions and energy costs uh, because it's uh, we are planning our production plan according to that one i want to just uh, show some examples about predictive and prescriptive analysis about our projects and one of them is as as i said we just tried uh, pilot applications and uh, uh, they, they have been working uh, since last six months uh, now we could uh, do vibration analysis and anoma detections in vertical roller mill and roller press units, and also uh, ID fans. These are critical equipments for us. We are, uh, now we are just doing uh, anoma detections to detect, uh, to use the previous historical data, and to uh, and continuously predict uh, actual vibration value, uh, uh, predictive vibration value, and continuous. Uh, uh, instantly comparing that uh, predicted value and the real value. If the deviation is more than 10%, then a warning just uh, sent uh, the related people to just understand that, uh, to just, uh, because it, it, it needs to be checked. Uh, the, the, those people need to check it. The other part is the pilot project. Uh, it's around three different kiln lines. Uh, it has been working and we are just following its accuracy. It's really high and effective. It's the free line predictions. Normally it's in, in, in the cement plant in each R or in each two R, just clean care samples taken manually or automatically and checked in an XRF device and some analysis done in the free line content. Then uh, they, uh, the, the operating uh, operators in the uh, plant or if they use them, expert system, it also sent to it directly. Uh, just analysis, the results, free line amount, it's one of the most critical. And some also some modules for some other uh, chemical uh, data just shared to that uh, operator and it, it managed the process. Just increase some fuel, just increase the uh, rotational speed of the kiln uh, to control the process according to that feed rate, uh, ID fan, RPMs, or other thing to optimize the process to catch the targeted free line. Uh, it's a universal thing in cement industry. But the problem is that the, uh, you cannot do sampling uh, in each five minutes, but you could predict it with an eye accuracy. It's also uh, could be possible, and we are doing that one. Uh, we are not only using the, the uh, some sensors data, some temp temperatures, some gas analyzers data, uh, motor drives, amperes and ki kilowatt values. And also, not only that one, also we are using historical data of that quality analysis uh, with the timestamp data. And additionally, we have a chance with the camera camera systems because we, we have some visual, uh, visual databases also available uh, from the, uh, just uh, uh, the camera from the main burner part. We are using that data also we digitalize and just uh, making uh, and using and just combining that visuals with the uh, existing uh, flow data and just combine free line. Uh, the other one is critical is cement grinding stage and also coal grinding and uh, raw mill grinding. We are planning to use it, but currently we, we did some uh, projects and, that, and we are now following their accuracy again about the finest prediction. Generally, sieve residue or specific uh, surface area is a critical parameter and targeted by cement producers in each cement grinding unit. Again, uh, according to size of the plant, generally it's in each two hours. Some samples are taken, or some online analyzers is used physically to check it, but it's not possible to just uh, do it accurately because that online analyzers also cause some deviations inside of it due to due to sampling issue. It's not so easy. Dusty environment, 
uh, sample performance or just that device performance caused many problems. And uh, these are also sophisticated, expensive, and some uh, some uh, intensive uh, maintenance and uh, uh, operating effort required about that physical uh, analyzing. Then uh, we just focused on, by the help of historical data and other things, we started to predict finest values also. And as you could see in the right bottom part, you could see that it's the so one week period of uh, cement uh, meals, uh, the uh, different products, it's just uh, based on it, and then adaptive according to the type of the product, no need to go in a single product. As you could see, there's a product change in here. And uh, the, 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 uh, the, the orange, uh, it's a trend base, but normally it's a points, just points are just uh, combined with uh, lines, but normally the points, each point, it's in each two R samples, in each two hours, taken samples data. It's a Blaine value in here. On the, but, but at the meantime, the green is the uh, predictions. It's an actual screenshot from our operation. As you could see that it's just, we could predict uh, uh, really accurately about that uh, Blaine values. And sometimes we just detect the problems about physical sampling. It may also happen. And by the help of that one, now we are working on to operate the mill with that predicted data rather than in each two hours data, we are planning to control the separator feed rate and other thing by the help of that predicted data. And we also did some uh, 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 predictive control uh, adaptations. I will also just uh, talk about it. And the other part is critical for us, the pyro process and oxy oxidizing conditions. And uh, SNCR is also critical because uh, NOx is also a critical parameter for us. We need to just control it. There are some limits in regulations and also just, just our environmental responsibility. We need to just limit that value on some level. And we are using also some, some uh, expensive, uh, expensive agents to just control it, to decrease it. It's also a high cost for us. It's just we are generally SNCR type systems are using ammonia to just reduce that system. It's a cost costly issue. And uh, we could predict that, that ammonia, uh, the, the NOx values, just uh, just near futures, just uh, next one minute, next two minutes, uh, NOx value can be predicted accurately. And we could manage uh, the amount of ammonia by the end. And uh, also some process issues also, the adaptations are critical. And another example about the CO2 emission tracking and uh, prescriptive analysis. We could, we could detect uh, just uh, actual productions the CO2 value. It's generally, it's just calculated in monthly or yearly basis, but our aim is to control it, to check it actually, how it's, how it's going on and, and also to understand the trends and to take some precautions and to understand the uh, low performance and high performance stops and uh, the, the, the effects on the process and the conditions. And also uh, to show the people its importance and it's, uh, show it as an actual value rather than a monthly importance value. We could catch it when it happens. That's also critical for us. Uh, and uh, since last uh, three months, we could follow our actual CO2 emissions. And, and, and specific CO2 emission factors per ton of clean jet in each of our plants. Uh, and it will be also valuable data for, uh, for the uh, near future uh, to adapt our investments and uh, the improvement plans. The other one is the quality predictions. Uh, as I said, it's just seven and 28 days can be predicted. Uh, we designed our models according to that one. And uh, we, could we could stabilize the final product characteristics rather than fluctuations. And we could manage, no need to grind finer, uh, fine, more fine, uh, because we predict the quality of data. And we take the actions before getting that 28 days. Because uh, normally you need to, when you see 28 days later on today, and if something happens in 28 days later, that means the past 27 days, because you didn't do uh, any uh, any action, they will also come. Uh, that means you also lost that three, four weeks. Uh, th there's also some fault. 
and you could take the action after 20, after four weeks. It, ha it happened normally. But our advantage, we could detect the future with accurately and we understand the problems uh, and we could uh, we could do uh, uh, we could do actions take the actions uh, before uh, just no need to wait uh, some weeks to to, uh, to see the uh, to see the results and uh, to lose that uh, and we don't we don't need to uh, we don't have to uh, wait that period of time and also decreasing clean care ratio is critical because if you stabilize the quality you could uh, you could uh, you could add more uh, additives you could decrease the amount of clean care you could control it much more accurately uh, by eliminating that fluctuations our aim is also uh, by controlling that quality part we, we are planning to decrease our co2 emissions also by that way and uh, the one of the other most important part for us, the higher alternative fuel substitutions, fossil fuels is, is a critical part. And uh, we just, by the help of that uh, knowledge and just info, uh, we could do uh, really uh, effective investments on it. And uh, since last four years, we just, uh, we just four times higher thermal substitution rate uh, performance in Turkey. It, just, it was in uh, 4.55 percent uh, 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 since four years ago. Today we achieved uh, 25 percent thermal substitution rates, and our aim is to reach 35, 40 percent uh, within two years. Uh, and uh, according to that, it just we believe that the, the critical part is also anomaly detection and predictive analytics uh, is also important for us to control the process adaptations. It will help us that because alternative fuels creates big fluctuations on the process. And uh, if we could optimize it, normalize it, we know that we could burn much more alternative fuel more effectively without energy losses. And uh, with less energy losses, that means higher substitution rates. It's also critical for us. And uh, again, CO2 emission effect is higher because if, if we could use uh, more alternative fuels, uh, and uh, more biogenic uh, carbon including fuels that means we, are, we could decrease the fossil fuel consumption and also uh, directly uh, co2 emissions and energy efficiency analysis and anomaly detections is also critical for us because electrical energy electrical energy is critical and uh, by the help of both grinding stage and pyro processes uh, grinding states and pyro pyro processing lines uh, by the help of that optimization and uh, that predictions and anomaly, anomaly detections and deviation control systems. And by the adaptation of also with that one to the uh, APC systems, uh, uh, we, 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 will, uh, we will decrease much more our uh, energy consumptions uh, because we could eliminate that high fluctuations. It can be stabilized. Only that uh, fluctuation uh, gap decreased. It, that means also a few percents of uh, uh, efficiency increase only by that way. Uh, just in that the part three, as I told, it's one of part the one of the critical part is for us the, the original software tools, some authentic tools and platforms, uh, because it, it we had to do it because we couldn't find an exact solution about that. One of the most uh, problematic part it's the, the digital quality system. It's quality management. There are many tools about lab tools and quality data collecting things, but not a not a whole thing is available. Just all the uh, quality analysis in a plant need to be stored in a database. Now we could do it, but by just own generated system, we could collect all the data with the time. All of them is time stamped and the analyzed time stamps, result time stamps, and all stored with all data in a database. Uh, since last six months, we have been using that uh, data database. And uh, additionally, the most critical part, it's just all the sensors and the other systems uh, as a time, uh, uh, have an exact time step. But when we come to uh, just machine learning analysis part, that one is the critical part because sampling, it's uh, especially the manual sampling, automatic sampling, you can again uh, calculate it, but manual sampling, it's just an hourly samples and you couldn't 
uh, you couldn't have any data about that when it's taken. It's just uh, it's in in, a, in an hour period. It represents an hour, but uh, which time, which second of that hour period? It's also critical for us. And uh, with that part, we just GPS and some uh, QR code combined uh, hand terminals we are using. Uh, we just uh, while sampling uh, the operator need to just uh, need to just just uh, uh, just cross check it by just uh, by the help of that hand terminals uh, he, he, he just uh, approve it on the field uh, he need to approve it uh, on the field uh, just pointing it uh, just uh, just pause he need to just uh, uh, show that ten terminal and uh, to do that uh, checkpoint uh, checkpoint uh, just uh, control system uh, to use it uh, and then take the sample and come to come back to uh, uh, comes back to uh, lab and just doing analysis then using the platform to input all the data and the, the just uh, stamped actual time of sampling it just also automatically uh, just uh, tagged uh, and added that sampling analysis by the help of that one that stored data uh, we, we could know exactly time of the sample uh, uh, in the process we could check it when that sample is taken we could see it and by the help of the, by the help of that we could use it we could make a combination and uh, we could do as a uh, feature uh, in our uh, machine learning analysis that uh, quality the quality uh, data is also used with that timestamp and we could adapt other process signals and other things combine it and we could predict uh, some uh, process data accurately by the help of that one the other uh, the other platform just we we have, we have been using uh, the the logging our failures uh, it's named the stop logger uh, we are just uh, failure tracking automatically by the help of that one the baseline platform uh, there are some rules and conditions can be inputted if a unit stopped which unit whatever it's a crusher the raw mill coal mill or cement mill or kiln there are some uh, there are some uh, rules inside of it it's just uh, we, we are we are just adding that rules we define uh, what what is a kill stoppage? We could define inside of it. We just check uh, ID fan. Just check main burner is working. Rotational speed to do to define some rules inside of it. If that rules happens, then that means a stoppage. And also with that rules, uh, that means and uh, start uh, for a unit. The, those are uh, def defined in the system. And we just uh, send that data automatically to that our uh, stop logging platform, and it's just uh, closed data, fixed data, uh, just only the uh, the reason of stoppage input in here. And um, after just approval of uh, uh, approval of uh, maintenance department, it directly automatic sent recorded to the. Uh, ERP system also recorded inside that uh, failure tracking uh, archive. By the help of that one, we know when the stoppage happened, how long does it take, what happened, what we did. We, all of them stored. And uh, since last uh, three months, three, four months, we have been collecting data. Our aim is to use that data to do some prescriptive analytics. By the help of our machine learning platform, we are planning to detect uh, a failure, uh, detect the failure, and uh, just give some prescriptive info to the operator. If the system uh, goes like that, there may be a failure in six weeks later, 10 days later, or just some assumptions we'll just show. Uh, and, and, uh, and the potential failure also just uh, will be shown. And uh, the last and the most important part uh, for us, uh, we have been doing uh, pilot projects since September of last year, and uh, we achieved some good results. Uh, uh, that's uh, advanced. We just focused on advanced process control issue. We are familiar with that expert systems since the beginning of uh, since the beginning of 2000. 
but the techno but that technology it's just not I cannot say it's properly used. There are many plans said that technology, but their runtime reliability effectiveness uh, uh, are there are some question marks about that. We have been using different brands, different suppliers uh, uh, solutions. But the main problem is that it just uh, you need to get a continuous support. And if, if the increased num if the uh, number of the control units increase, it's not so easy to control it. Because it just, uh, there are some reliability and performance losses happen uh, due to model structures inside the platform. You cannot use it effectively because of its uh, uh, just uh, not a user-friendly interface or you need to be an expert about it. Uh, and the, the, the related people always change uh, when where you're contacting, uh, just uh, discussing about that issue. Uh, you told someone uh, he did that models, but after that, uh, some, some years, some months later, another guy come. You need to explain it to that people about the conditions of the plant. The plant are also, plant uh, have also uh, been doing some implementation change in the process, alternative fuel adaptations, some some uh, some modifications in the annual overalls, or some smaller big investments. That all these also affect the model need to be replaced, and uh, then also uh, re re retrained. It's also critical. It just it's also it's it, but 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 that part it's 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 not so easy to do it. Uh, because no one, uh, okay, that platform can be as a sophisticated way and some experts can do it, but no any other guy uh, know better than that plant uh, the characteristics and uh, process details of it. And because of that, because of that idea, we focused on that issue. We need to, uh, we need to use our own APC platform. We need to manage it not by the, the programmers guys or some experts, uh, trained process guys need to use it in each plant that those people need to be available. Uh, and uh, the, that platform needs to be flexible, some user friendly. Uh, yes, there may be some advanced uh, chains and adaptations required. It's okay. There's, there, there could be also an advanced team to support all the plants, but the plant people, the, the production guys, process guys in the plant, need to check it do, to do some fine tunes, to refresh, to improve its uh, quality of uh, the control unit. It's also, it, it's also critical for us. And it needs to be directly integrated with AI and uh, machine learning supports. Uh, and, and we did it. Uh, currently, uh, we could do it. We're just getting some results, predictions from our uh, machine learning models inside of it use some process data, some quality data also uh, feed into it. And uh, we combine all that data with an APC platform. It just it named as an APC platform, but uh, we are using not a static way, it's just uh, some dynamic and flexible formation. It's again an original design. Uh, the test and interface generated according to our requests with a, with a programming partner with us. Uh, we have been studying with them since a couple. We have started that project a couple a couple of years ago. But that uh, single platform, with including every details uh, and the adaptations, have been started at last September. And currently, we just did it uh, on a cement kiln. And uh, the second one uh, has been going on. And also, uh, cement grinding mill adaptation has started uh, one and a half month ago. And uh, we are following the results and uh, we get promising results on it. Our plan to just uh, implement it, all our plans and uh, to use it, uh, to use it that uh, and to get the efficiency of it in all of our plans. Uh, and there are some uh, just initial screens of our, uh, just ML assisted uh, APC platform. Uh, there are some fine tunes available. Some trends can be checked inside of it. The correlations and also uh, the relation uh, issues uh, also can be inputted inside of it. It's also a critical project for us. 
And uh, the final part, just as I said, it's also a new thing for us. We try to adapt that uh, mixed reality part. Uh, artificial reality is one side, but mixed reality is also critical for us. Uh, because there are two sides. Uh, the, 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 this technology, we believe that it will be much more important in the near future. And uh, due to that idea, we invested that uh, that technology uh, since the beginning of uh, 2020. And uh, we are the first uh, industry, we are one of the first industrial company, I think the first cement company uh, uh, in, in Turkey on that HoloLens. Two, uh, it's one of the uh, mixed reality option. It's uh, one of the most sophisticated one uh, with it's just both in the CPU in it and its capabilities. And we are doing some uh, developing uh, uh, development uh, uh, adaptations on it by some partners to do it. There are some, uh, the, the, the remote assistance support is also critical. Training, to do, we can do, uh, we could do. Uh, remote uh, assistance support uh, training. We tried but, uh, that adaptations uh, on the central office, and we are planning to uh, implement it to the plants in uh, 2020, 2022. Just it's also a critical thing for us. And on the one side, also we 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 have some projects is going on about our safety trainings, uh, some. Uh, site visits and audit tours to show the plant data to people, uh, to visitors or some trainees about that. 3D model inspections, it's also the capability to check, uh, rather than a drawing, to check the project on 3D. Uh, we have been discussing uh, some suppliers, technology suppliers about that, uh, to, to implement that uh, part to just use some our uh, drawings on the 3D model structure and to use it uh, with, with mixed reality. It's also uh, critical for us. And also new employee trainings, it's critical. Some part chains, uh, some, uh, some uh, critical operations uh, can be shown on, the, uh, on, the, on that uh, uh, screen uh, on the eye with the, with the uh, hologramic way. And also at the meantime, using their hands is also critical. And also, uh, as you know, it's, as I said, we are in some, uh, we have some operations in some islands in West Africa. Uh, we need to do some also remote assistance support to them uh, rather than just traveling because in some plans in Turkey to West Africa, it takes around 11, 12 hours to go there. But there, there may be some small issues can be solved on remote assistance support. We are planning to use also that technology uh, to do to do that supports. And uh, our, uh, that's I just uh, tried to uh, summarize our industrial digitization uh, journey about that one. As I said, the, the, to as a complete summary, it's just to, to talk about the complete summary. The project started in 2017 with the, with the first pilot project in one of our plants in Denizli plants. Then we did some investigations and press studies around one and a half, two years. Then we decided to go it uh, with them. Uh, with, with, then we decided to do a project like that, but we need to create an uh, architecture model and we need to have a project team. We create a team with our people from plant and uh, just some people from central office around 23 people uh, just in that team. Uh, some uh, automation guys, electric, electronic engineers, uh, uh, process engineers, uh, chemical engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, and, uh, and uh, some uh, environmental engineers and engineers in, in that scope. Uh, and also some uh, just reporting and planning people in it. Uh, it's, it's a big team just uh, designing and controlling and developing that structure. And we did the start, uh, we did the uh, kickoff in, uh, in the uh, third quarter of 2019. And within a nearly 100 days, uh, we completed the Turkish, uh, the, the plants and uh, the Turkish plants uh, implementation. It's 103 days, something like that. Seven integrated plants and three winding plants connected to a structure. And we started to just collect them data and we visualized uh, the main screens. 
Uh, after the, after the, from the beginning of 2020, we just started the part two with the, with, we just uh, define analytics and, uh, and machine learning and AI adaptations. We did the partnership uh, pilot application and uh, we did the partnership end of quarter two and we started some pilot applications at the meantime. And quarter three, we started the global integration part. We, we just uh, get new licenses for Portugal and also West Africa. Uh, and uh, in quarter four, uh, we also started the uh, part four with some uh, original uh, software development tools uh, and also start to check and research BI adaptation, uh, business intelligence adaptations. And uh, since the beginning of this year, we have been focused mainly on this advanced uh, machine learning, uh, AutoML structure to do some analysis and to get some results. And uh, uh, just uh, officially, we started uh, the APC project in, uh, in the end of quarter one, beginning of quarter two. Uh, previously, we did some pilot applications and uh, trying some uh, specific plans. Now we also, uh, uh, did the uh, official partnership and the project is going on with the timeline. And uh, in quarter three, we are, we, we are planning uh, to create a global formation and standardization, board and visualization report and other things, and also the adaptations will start. We, we are planning to uh, just use it, uh, not only in Turkey, also we, we just use that AI adaptations in Portugal and also in Africa operations. In quarter four, we are planning to just close that uh, initial phase. And after that, journey will not finish. Uh, we'll go on <laughs> by, uh, by new phases because it's uh, new technologies are coming, as I told, mixed reality adaptation, new uh, robotic issues is also critical for us. We have some research. Uh, we are planning to do some adaptations about that uh, 3D printer, 3D printers. And uh, on the data side, uh, we are planning to create uh, a global data warehouse structure uh, at the next year. Uh, try to do some adaptations on cloud basis, uh, not only the server systems, also we just uh, planning to use uh, cloud, uh, the advantage of, the advantage of cloud. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 since it, it, it was the same roadmap, since the, uh, 2019, and that's good to uh, to achieve that within a uh, nearly uh, five years period uh, to do it. Uh, we are on the way. We believe that we could get the advantage. We we we, we just now start to get some advantage. We believe that since after 2022, uh, uh, that uh, investment, that effort, uh, will create a big advantage. Uh, on both efficiency, cost, and uh, and industrial performance, uh, it's, we we will use that uh, investment and effort uh, at next uh, at next stage uh, at next phase, and we are planning to improve it by adding new adaptations on it uh, with the new technological developments. We are following it all the uh, all all the chains and adaptations. Uh, it's also critical for us. Thank you for your listening uh, today. Uh, just I, I we, we I tried to explain our uh, industrial digitalization journey. Uh, it it is it, it it has been a long story, but we we, we believe that and by the support of our uh, board uh, and uh, by the help of them, uh, by the belief of them, we 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 come a point. And we believe that. Uh, we will uh, we will do uh, much more adaptation and uh, we could improve it thanks for your listening